What a great joy it is to sing of his goodness and his love this morning and his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Let us uh, turn to two different Bible verses this morning. One, we will stay with Acts, and then we will go to another verse. Um, Acts chapter 20, verses 32, and then Hebrews chapter 2, 1 through 4. Acts 20, 32, Hebrews 2, 1 through 4. I'll read here. Acts 20, 32. Now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. And the next verse, Hebrews chapter 2, 1 through 4. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to to his will. Every new year, we uh, get the opportunity to take a whole year as a chunk of time to evaluate and reflect on the positive and, and negative changes that have come upon our lives. And as we know, change is often very slow. And although we live in a culture where change, uh, everything is expected to change very, ha uh, very instantaneously, and to our frustration, change often doesn't happen as, as uh, fast as we want. And change often, th there's a shift in direction or change ha often comes in very slow increments. And the Bible describes this in incremental slow process in different ways. And we read two different passages of scripture this morning that had a phrase in that, uh, that I want to highlight this morning. Now, when we go to Acts chapter 20, and if we can show that on the screen, there's a there's a phrase there that the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Now keep note of that word, build you up. And in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, it says that if we don't play, pay closer attention to what we heard, we can drift away. So this incremental change that ha can happen in our life could be in the form of building us up, or it can be in the form of drifting away. Now, the process of building up is like a metaphor uh, to indicate a brick by brick incremental increase or incremental growth in our spiritual life. And uh, we're often, we're described as a spiritual building or a spiritual house, incrementally built by the power of God and the power of the gospel. Like in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, which we heard a few weeks ago, you yourselves are living stone being built up as a spiritual house. And this process of being built up is not only a, a not only that is empowered by God, but also this is uh, this includes our full participation and effort. In Jude, uh, verse twenty, it says, "But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life." So here there are two verbs: building yourselves up and keeping yourselves in the love of God. Now, uh, that's all I'm going to talk about building up, but now the opposite of it is drifting away. Drifting away happens when we let nature take its course. And those uh, in this state of life are de described in Scripture in a couple of places as boats in the sea being tossed and fro by the waves. You know, we're just letting nature take its course. We, we, were, say, we were sitting in a boat, we're just letting the water take us where it, uh, it, it, it will through the challenges of life. And even if they're not waves, there's a tendency to be slowly carried away by the water. And, uh, you know, I learned this the hard way when uh, my family and I went uh, on boating this a couple of months ago. And, uh, you know, as I was in this paddle boat, uh, with, you know, paddling and trying to steer at the same time, you know, I started take, taking pictures because, you know, if you don't take a picture, did you really boat? You know, so, you know, so I'm taking video, I'm trying to do everything all at once, and then I stopped steering, and I stopped paddling, and I started just focusing on recording things, 
And now I'm finding ourselves, and our two kids are on this boat, and we need that. And this is the first time we're ever on a boat. And so finding ourselves drifting away, you know, uh, to this bank, which is full of rocks and shallow water. And uh, first time we came close, and I quickly steered and started paddling. The second time, I, I guess I got caught up in something. I was videotaping or talking to Carissa or something. All of a sudden, we find ourselves at, in the banks of this this lake, hit against the, the rocks. And uh, I start paddling, but the, the rudder in the back started hitting the rock, and I knew I'm in trouble. So um, then I uh, started, I paused for a minute. Uh, you know, a lot of us are, all of us are freaking out just a, just a bit uh, because there's nobody around. Um, and so, you know, we didn't have like that long stick thing to push us against the, the rock. So I had to get out of the boat, you know, not get myself wet, but just push, push ourselves off the the uh, boat and then jump back in the boat to get us away from the shallow waters. So, you know, this is kind of a, a picture as to how drifting happens in our walk. And so the process of drifting doesn't take much effort. All you have to do is take our eyes off the, off, off the course or become complacent like Pete was talking about last week. And, and the he- author of Hebrews says in the passage just that, that we read earlier that how can we neglect such a great salvation? That's a simple act as neglecting over the course of time can lead to very serious consequences in our, in our walk with God. So while good change can be slow and it can take time to see the results, drastic change can often creep up on us when we are not able, and, and to a point where we're not able to get back ourselves back together. So in the context of the verse I read earlier, we can choose to be built up in the gospel, built up in the word of grace, and, and, and we, or we can choose to drift away from the gospel. So reminding ourselves of the gospel and living in the knowledge of the gospel is our foundation. It is th- that is what's most important. And by God's grace, through songs, through prayers, through exhortations, through the communion, through preaching, is what we try to do when we come together every time as a church. And, I, and we're being reminded of the gospel, whether we know it or not, or whether we appreciate it or not. And this is most important to us in helping us build up in the most holy faith. So now this as thought as a foundation, I want to lay that foundation as now we think about a little bit more practically. You know, we're inching closer to the new year, and there's about five or six days remaining. It is a good time for us to step back and take a deeper look into, into this chunk of 12 months that has passed us. You know, the more honest and clear picture we have about uh, our life in these 12 months of whether we were being built up or whether we were drifting away will help us make better decisions as we step into the new year, if God gives us a new year. So here are some diagnostic questions, two questions I want to leave with us as we head into the new year. Number one is this question, have I grown in love for Jesus? Have I grown in love for Jesus? 1 Corinthians 8, 1 says, knowledge puffs up, Puffs up, but love builds up. Use that term again, builds up. In Ephesians 3, 19, as part of Paul's prayer to the church, he says, To know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So I just want to also clarify, knowledge is not a bad thing. It is the love, the knowledge without love. Knowledge without love is dangerous. Knowledge without love is it will form a pride in us to push us away from others who may lack in that knowledge or make us feel like we are important. And we might be able to say that, you know, in the past 2021, I heard a lot of messages. I read the Bible a lot. I, I was able to know a lot about Jesus, but we're still, but it's much, far, far, it's much harder to admit that we have grown in our love for Jesus. And this is a human reality that we all struggle with. Is we're able to collect so much knowledge about this person, Jesus Christ, yet come bankrupt in our love for Jesus. So there's a knowing about Jesus, and there is knowing Jesus. They're two different things. To know Jesus intimately is to love him. And not only that, to know Jesus is to love people. So this love is not just a feeling, but it also says 
in 2 Corinthians 5.14. This love leads us, leads us to action. Paul says, for the love of Christ controls us. So in this past year, have we grown in a kind of love that was the driving force for our actions to minister to others this past year? Have you experienced this controlling love of God, the controlling love of Christ that allowed us to make sacrificial steps and actions for others? I want to remind ourselves that we are not in the business of trying to earn God's love. We love because He first loved us. That needs to settle in our souls that we are able to love Jesus because Jesus first loved us. He demonstrated His love so that He... Gave his life for us on the cross. So we don't love Jesus because we want his love back. He already loves us. And in that love, we are able to abide and rest. And by rest, I don't mean sleep. right? By rest, I mean we don't have to strive. We don't have to toil to earn his love. His love is there for us. We're able to build up. See that term of building up in, in the foundation of his love. And start experiencing more of his steadfast love. The more our eyes are open, the more we know him, the more we understand the dimensions of his love. His love is always there. It's constant. But whether we like to admit it or not, we don't know the extent of his love. And that is why we need to grow in the knowledge of his love every day so that we can understand not only that God loves us despite our weaknesses, but we can say to others that God loves you. God loves you despite the things you have gone through. We will not make it a, a, a place for ourselves to say, oh, God only loves me. It's just me and Jesus. It's a, it, as your uh, love expands for G Christ, your love also expands for others to include them, to, to pour out his love to others. In the context of this verse I read, in the love of Christ controls us. The context is that Christ has entrusted them the ministry and message of reconciliation. And the love of Christ controls them to remain faithful as ambassadors of Christ. We need, to be, we need to understand the love of Christ to help us to be faithful in the service to Christ. Now, the second thing, first thing is that have I grown in the love of Christ? Second and last point, have I been faithful in the little things? Have I been faithful in the little things? We have the tendency of postponing major decisions or making decisions even because we think we don't have enough. We don't have enough talent. We don't have enough knowledge. We don't have enough resources. We don't have enough courage. We don't have enough name recognition. We don't have enough willpower. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough support. We don't have enough opportunities. I started listing all these things. Like It was almost like therapy for me to, to, to see the, all the things that I talk to myself about that keeps me away from making decisions. This is the, this is the story of our life. The, the excuses can be long and lengthy if we rely on it to justify our inaction. Now, when we read through the parables of Jesus, a recurring theme we see is that Jesus, Jesus commends those who are faithful with the little that they have. If we read through the Gospels, we see it over and over again. Let me read a couple of instances. Matthew 25, 21. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, and I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Luke 16, 10. If you are faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in the large ones. But if you are dishonest in the little things, you won't be honest in greater responsibilities. That little things is actually even smaller than what we think. When we think of little, we might think of there's some significant things to build upon. What Jesus is using is a, is a very minuscule thing. If you're faithful in those minuscule things that you think you have, you, you, you will not only... He will not only give you more things to be faithful over, whether in this life or in the life to come, but he will also entrust you to be faithful in larger ones. And, and this is another thing for us to look at in the past year. Have I been faithful with what had God has given me? My health, my resources, my abilities. And here's the good news. When we are faithless, he remains faithful. So we don't need to strive and toil to prove ourselves faithful in that I'm all alone. I have to do it with my willpower. That's not how God leaves us. We get to rest in the faithfulness of God. And as rest, I mean an active rest of we know that God is faithful. He remains faithful. And we can build on that. We can build on that by being faithful in the little things. You know, knowing the faithfulness of God allows us to be faithful with, 
with the gospel, faithful with our health, faithful with our wealth, faithful with our relationships, our families, faithful with our gifts, and so on. And I want to invite you all, everyone, and including myself, to see the delight in living a life marked with faithfulness as we are walking in the love of God. A life marked with faithfulness as we are walking in the love of God. And this verse that I'm about to read marks this, this, uh, this uh, unity of love and faithfulness. Proverbs 3, 3, to, uh, 3, 3 and 4. If uh, you can put that up there, yes. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Verse 4, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. This love and faithfulness. And this is what I want to leave with us all this morning the love of God and the faithfulness of God that remains constant. Let us build on that. Let us also love God and love others. Let us also walk in faithfulness because he remains faithful. And as I work, invite the worship team to come forward. When I saw the verse 4, that you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. There's so many verses, especially in light of Christ, saying that he grew up in the stature and wisdom he grew up in the favor of God and man. You know, the, the Christ gave us this example of showing us how to walk with this steadfast love and faithfulness. He was faithful in everything without sin. He, was, he loved everyone. He, he was able to obtain the favor of God in the sight of God and, and, and man. Let this not leave you. In fact, not just something you adorn around your neck, but... The author says, write them in the tablet of your heart. Let this be something that marks your character and your being. Let this be in your heart. Let this come out of your heart. Love and faithfulness. Love and faithfulness. You let your life be defined by love and faithfulness. Love for Christ. Love for others. Faithfulness to God. Faithful in the little things. Faithfulness. Be committed to the Lord's work. Be committed to your families. Be committed in your workplace. Be faithful unto death. Hallelujah. And let me conclude by reading one more verse, and this is a verse of prayer. 2 Corinthians 1, 11, and 12. As we make our decisions uh, going into the next year, you might have many resolutions. Maybe I'll be thinking about what to have resolutions about. But in all this, let's, I'm going to pray this over us. Verse uh, 11, to this end, we always pray for you that God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May God be with you all.